Welcome to another episode of me attempting to get this Mini Cooper S back on the road. Quick recap of where we are. I got into a bit of a pickle trying to bleed the slave cylinder for the clutch. So I just want to say thank you to everyone that actually commented on the video offering up your suggestions. I've got a lot to think about, lots of different tricks and things to try, but the piece of advice that I'm going to use first is actually Bill Cunningham, who said, crack on with some other jobs first and then come back to it with a fresh mind so that you don't get frustrated and you don't basically end up losing your rag over it. And I think that is some solid advice and that is exactly what I'm going to do. So what we're going to do now is we are going to attack i do use the word attack on purpose <laughs> we're going to attack these tie rods i'm replacing the outer and the inner these also are going to be seized on this side now it was suggested to me by john and it was an amazing idea that using my tool here for the inner tie rod you see that can just like slot over there and then you can just kind of get it all the way down the end and then just basically take off the inner tie rod without having to do any of the other malarkey. The only problem with that, however, for me is that this tool doesn't quite make it over the protective boot and I do want to save that. I actually need to crack this lock nut off because you see this, this is two pieces, that's a lock nut and then there's this kind of locking collet that goes over the outer tie rod. I need this piece. Come on, be less of a pig than the other one was. <laughs> Just do me a favour. Oh. <laughs> it is stuck. What a surprise. So I've been going at this for about 20 minutes now, solely trying to get this nut off. And it's really annoying because it's only this little collet here that I actually need. What I am going to do, because I'm spending too long on it, so I didn't, I wanted to save this boot, but I just had a look at how much they are and you can pick one up for £16. So now, this tool can squeeze over there onto there. Go on, get there. Okay, go on. Don't tell me that's now stuck on as well. <laughs> come on, come off. Ow. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Did that get it though? Oh yes, it did. There we go. And I do wonder now that I've actually got this off, whether I still might be able to get this nut off because I can get some proper leverage on this now. I mean, that's obviously a surefire way to break your spanner. That was my full body weight balancing on that. And I'm not the lightest guy. Oh, oh. <laughs> finally. <laughs> Yeah, the good old standing on the spanners trick. Classic. Yes, I will get a grinder. Well, I suppose at the very minimum, at least a bigger saw. <laughs> There it is, that's all I wanted. 
This reminds me of that Thomas Edison quote when he was inventing the light bulb. He was quoted as saying, after having failed many, many times, he said, I haven't failed, I've just found 10,000 ways which won't work. I'm not comparing myself to Thomas Edison. <laughs> I'm merely saying, I now know 10,000 ways in which you can't get a seized tie rod end off. But the important thing is, in this situation, I know the one way that works. So we got there in the end, didn't we? So before I installed the new inner tie rod, I did notice as I was taking it off that the power steering seems to have sprung a little leak. I think it's because these bolts simply aren't tight enough. I did think when I looked at the torque spec that it was particularly low and it looks like that might have well have been the case. So I'm just going to nip, nick these up a little bit just while I've got access. I don't think that's even the right size spanner. Come on. No. This is silly. clean up all of my mess. I imagine I'm now going to need to re-bleed the steering now I had these bolts off. Okay, I'm just gonna do that quickly without the camera in the way. <laughs> okay, job is a good one. So I can't put the tie rod end on yet because I need to leave this end off so that I can slide the new boot on there. I can't get the boot until tomorrow morning. Who remembers the list? So this was a list of all the things that the car needed doing before we took it for an MOT. And if you're new here and you're not from the UK, an MOT is our annual government inspection to make sure that the car is roadworthy. So according to this list, I've got two things left. Bleed the brakes, which I've definitely done, and the clutch, well, we know about that. And then simply refit front bumper. So I was having a look at this list and I thought, oh my God, we're there, we've done it. Yeah, not quite. <laughs> I just went around the car looking at what actually needs to be done before this car can, you know, be driven on the road. And we've gone very 21st century with this new list. Apologies for the flickering. So what we actually need is the slave cylinder sorted, the steering knuckle and top mount on the driver's side, the tie rods, which we know about. I need to torque the lower engine mount. I need to put a new pad wear sensor on the front left caliper. I need to tighten up the engine mount bolt on the right hand side properly. I need to tighten all of the ball joints on the front to install the subframe stretch bolts. I need to tighten up the handbrake again, to refit the bumper, connect the battery terminal properly in the boot, bleed the ABS, clear the lights on the dash. <laughs> How did I miss all of those things? <laughs> right, let's see what we can do. I was about to crack on with that list of stuff yesterday, but I realized that I hadn't bought my missus a birthday card. <laughs> so everything had to stop, packed away, went and did that because life would not have been worth living if I'd have forgotten the birthday card. So I went to pick up the boot for the inner tie rod. Came with two, I, th I thought I was buying one. It's not really a big deal. I'm sure this will come in handy in the future, the other spare one. First things first, let's just put a little bit of anti-seize on this so the next person doesn't have the same issue I had. And then you get on there, take my zip tie. And then on you go. No, got it wrong. And then I'm gonna put a little clamp on this side rather than a zip tie because why not? Okay, now you can go on. Now my collet. And now finally this bad boy. and I did measure this before it came off. So I've got some kind of idea of, as to where it goes back on. Couple more. Okay, so that looks somewhat there. 
I only need to get this to a standard that's okay to drive it straight to where I'm gonna get the tracking done and then get them to sort it out. Oh, finally. I never thought I was gonna see the back of this job. <laughs> Okay, so that is two new sets of track rods, or tie rods, whatever you want to call them, on both sides now. So you know what that means now. I think it's time we give this slave cylinder another go. <laughs> Wish me luck. Boys, I've done it. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I've done it anyway. I do believe that this clutch is now bled. Take a look at this. <sighs> the relief is unbelievable. Oh wow. That only took about three days. <laughs> so I didn't film any of that and the reason I didn't film any of it is because not only am I new to working on cars like this I'm also new to making videos these videos take ages that's why this whole thing is taking so long I'm slow at working on cars and I'm slow at actually filming it and it can get a bit overwhelming at times and so when I'm trying to concentrate on doing a video it means I'm not quite concentrating on doing the car and vice versa so for this because it's been giving me so much pain I just wanted to dedicate all of my mental energy onto taking it real nice and slow and just thinking through the problem trying to use a bit of reason and logic as to what has actually been going wrong with this slave cylinder. And so thank you to everyone that commented on the last video of all your suggestions about where I might be going wrong and things to try. But an honourable mention needs to go to Harry Crawford, who put me on to the idea, I should be looking for somewhere else on here where air could be getting into the system. And it turns out that's what it was. So I was bleeding the clutch correctly. The reason that I singled that comment out at the beginning and, where, and, and why I should start from there is because over the course of these couple of days, I've actually tried most of the things that were suggested, you know, people saying bleed it with the clutch pedal depressed and bleed it with it up and then release the pressure and then depress all these different things. And I'd kind of done every variation and that's why I was getting a bit at my wits end with it. But Harry's suggestion of checking for air turned out to be the right one. Let me show you what has happened. Before I start, there were a couple of other people who's really suggested that the slave cylinder might be duff. Joe G being one of them, a couple of other people. Apologies if I've forgotten all your names. I've been getting quite a lot of comments. This right here is the new slave cylinder that I bought. On the car right now that you just saw is the original slave cylinder. Now what I worked out was happening here is that the feed line that goes into here wasn't seating properly. In fact, you couldn't push it all the way in no matter how much i tried i greased up the inside of that i've greased up the actual feed tube and the seal that's on the end on the pipe and absolutely nothing i'd do no amount of wiggling no amount of finessing and you can't do it too hard don't forget because it's a it's just a metal pipe it would not go all the way in and seat properly it was hard to actually notice it by eye because it needed such a small amount to go. So this is the original slave cylinder that I was actually trying to replace. So I'm talking about this pipe wasn't going all the way down into here properly. Even if you look at that, it, it's not, you know, these two bits of plastic aren't mated 100% and that was what was kind of throwing me off. And there was just absolutely nothing you could do to make it, to make that pipe fit in here the way it fits in there so what it looks like was happening was as i'm bleeding i'm doing the whole bleed procedure correctly but if you remember from the last video when i was bleeding it there was a lot of air coming out of this and the only air really that should come out is this is why you compress you compress this slave cylinder to actually bleed it because the air is kind of just gets trapped in this little area here so when you bleed it only a small amount of air should come out and when i was bleeding on video there was loads and loads of air coming out and that just goes counter to everything that i'd seen about doing this job and then when i saw harry's comment i was like ah i've got an idea and so what was happening was because that wasn't seated properly as we were bleeding it the air was simply getting sucked in here 
coming down and then coming straight out of the nipple there it was just in a it was just going around in a loop loads and loads of air so that then poses the question is this a duff slave cylinder i mean my thought is yeah <laughs> it must be a duff slave cylinder because we have absolutely no finessing or anything that feed pipe fits into that original slave cylinder this one did not want to know so why have i put a broken slave cylinder back on the car then what's the deal with that well the reason i wanted to replace that was because it was starting to leak a little bit of fluid from the main boot it was leaking fluid around here which you know kind of indicates that one of the seals on the inside has died now being me i might have misdiagnosed it that fluid might have been just from something else it might have leaked onto it from higher above the engine or i've spilt something or it could well have been duff so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to keep that one on there for the time being and i'm going to keep an eye on it and if it looks like it's going to start leaking again then i will go and buy another slave cylinder but i'll stay away from whichever brand this was because there seems to be something off certainly with that in there and you know when you buy parts online from you know a motor factor you get in the habit sometimes or i certainly do of just like choosing the cheapest one that's what i did with this i probably wouldn't do that again now if i'm going to replace that i'd probably just get one of the more expensive ones or one from a brand that you've actually heard of i can't remember the name of this brand to be quite honest with you i've thrown away the packaging as well but yeah so thanks for everyone for for helping out <sighs> finally got the clutch bled <laughs> I'm going to be able to sleep sound tonight. Oh, oh that has made me so, so happy. Oh. So that is now the tie rods and the clutch problem both sorted. And I think we're going to end on a high. See you in the next one.